welcome back once again with the four planet video it has been an interesting journey with learning about conjunctions why they happen sorry how do they relate to each other when they're happening and the three planet was all the more beautiful so if you've not watched those videos please do watch them to have a definite clarity over the four video uh, four planet uh, conjunction video that is coming up right now right here over to you Ishti. looking forward to it all right so we've done the two and three and with that we have actually the basis for working on all the other conjunctions and then i'll get into more chart examples now because it, it, once you learn the principle, it gets very easy. And once we get into very elaborate conjunctions, it gets very fun to see. So well, let's start with that right away. And uh, let me see where we are. Where is that share button? It is here. And here we go. So now we're entering four planet conjunctions. And I have used the term to help us understand these four planet conjunctions. Uh, for example, uh, when I use two planets conjunctions, I use the simple term, saint blessing the sinner. Hmm. Okay. Then we went into three planet conjunctions and I said uh, two against one. And hmm. it will feel like that. Also in the person's life, it will feel like two against one. You just hope you're on the side of the two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you have to check the chart to see maybe the Lagnesh is part of the two, maybe the Lagnesh is part of the one group. Then you have a problem. And it will Will also feel like it'll also be experienced like that in the way events start transpiring. Now, when we enter four planet conjunctions, we have to do two things. We have reached a threshold. So we are going to talk about two different facets of this. Now, four planets conjoining are like rivaling gangs, you know, two pairs. And these are trying to impact each other. But actually, they're working in parallel. They're working in parallel and they're trying to do their own thing. The problem is only when a bystander is involved, okay? Implying either three or five planet conjunctions, okay? So there are these two which are working together. So now we have an example of this from Saravali. I've relied on Saravali. You can hear from my from what I've done so far. If you haven't, then the previous videos also shows this. I rely on Saravali because Maharaj Kalyan Varma was trying to consolidate the tradition. So he showed what the traditional approach is. And in this, he teaches, interestingly enough, he believes the consolidated tradition on conjunctions is Yavana's works. He doesn't include every of Yavana's works, but he includes this in this topic. All right? So it means we should rely on Yavana, Yavana Acharya for some things. Now, the results given. It brings a writer. If Sun, Moon, Mars, and Mercury join, it brings a writer, a theme. It gives divisive speech, sickly continents, Cunningness and capable of deceit. Mm. Remember this capable of deceit? We heard that <laughs> the sun and moon conjoined, right? Right. There's something repeating over here. Interesting. And sun and moon are part of this. Let's try and see if we can unravel that. So now, who are the most malefic and most benefic in this con combination? So I go to my list. I see Mercury is here, moon and sun and then Mars. In this order, in fact, like that. So Mars and Mercury are, are the sinner and saint. Saint is Mercury, sinner is Mars. Mars, right? Worst sinner, worst saint. They are from group one, okay? Hmm. The ones in between have found out they're being sandwiched and are made group two, sun and moon. So hmm. it's like two yogas. Okay. Okay. Hello. One is Mars Mercury Yoga and the other is Moon Sun Yoga. So, result. Mercury is the most benefic, Mars is most malefic. They will exchange results of the yoga, giving very beneficial results to Mars. Namely, the power to wield the pen as a weapon. Mars's weapon has become Mercury. Yeah. He likes weapons. This, however, ruins Mercury, causing one to spread rumors, scandals as a means of attack. So, Mercury doesn't have, in fact, the translation is scurrilous speech. Hmm. Okay? Somebody who is speaking to ruin other people. So the speech, the Mercury, has become very negative. The Buddha, okay, the Ba. All right. Similarly, the remaining sun and moon do give sickly continents to the weak moon and deceitful tendencies if the chart is Amavasya. All right. So then we have to go back and read Sun Moon Yoga and then apply it to this yoga as well. Yeah. So Dilemma. 
so mm-hmm. if it's mars and mercury it could also be a tabloid writer who would have to be you know poison pen at uh, times well it would be very uh, it would be very negative tabloid if it was mars yeah. mercury okay um you can get different types of mercury in this now what i'm going to is now express is the dilemma that none of these results will make sense if just one among these planets other than mercury is exalted or on the sun okay then all this is thrown to the wind then none of that will these results will not work at all and which is the pivotal the most prime part of us learning the, these principles of jyotish because we don't know the principle then we will not know how to apply this Yes. So it's not enough to just read the book. We have to figure out what exactly will happen. So, if let's say moon, let's say this yoga happened in Taurus. Okay, yeah. moon is the best over there. So the order does not become Mercury, Moon, Sun, Mars. It becomes Moon, then Mercury, Mars. then Sun, then Mars. Now the yoga is between Moon and Mars, Mars and Sun and Mercury. Completely different results. The gangs have changed. The groups have changed. Everything is different. these standard results won't work you cannot apply them okay this is beautiful this is beautiful that is why you know they say the four planet combination is uh, whatever is there in the text is not happening it is not happening for the very simple reason that we are not taking these as you call them small things into account because we are small things with profound impact yes yes so yeah. we have to learn the principle before we apply that's the idea these work if neither of these are exalted or on sign or at least if mercury is the strongest in on sign excitation then it will work but otherwise not now mm. do i have a chart oh i have to explain something more because we are reaching the threshold there's a threshold coming when we reach four planet conjunctions pravraja yoga pravraja there should be a long a over here raja now when four out of the seven planets form yogas in the chart these are considered significant scale tilting yogas which sway the chart in one specific direction hmm now by this statement i am not talking only about conjunctions all right firstly it implies four out of seven more than half of the planets are participating in one activity hmm okay this applies to conjunctions that we are speaking of and also to graha mala yogas planets in a chain following each other graha mala okay hmm. so whenever you get four or more who are participating in one activity the entire chart is you doing only that okay hmm. only that and you have to be a bit attentive then because there could be a problem okay coming from there or blessing coming from there right right now if we include the nodes then it's not 4 out of 7 but 5 out of 9 so you have a you now have an option include the node or exclude the node okay if you include it's 5 out of 9 then you cannot say 4 out of 9 it has to be 5 out of 9 4 out of 7 or 5 out of 9 is the general ten, trend we get with the with the um, um with the uh, with the with the with the classics okay it causes a disregard for other parts of life in favor of that one activity it is from this basis that we start deriving the understanding of kala sarpa and kala amrita yoga because that's also like a graha mala yoga you right all right so it's as if some of the chart is becoming tilted in one direction just focused on one direction all right the remain in a let's say we talk about the uh, kala sarpa kala amrita yoga and uh, we can speak of that it depends on rahu and ketu but if i now argue that uh, what's happening is is that seven signs have become the focal point instead of 12 hmm. all right Then let's try and play with that idea now the, the all the planets will maximum be in seven signs out of 12 hmm now that is more than 50% of the signs right okay. right okay right so we can use this for us as well yes right and, and even if the planets are not joined the nodes and the receptors will be in five signs or less this is a huge focus on a select number of signs this causes a severe scale tilting 
of the chart. Everything is moving in one direction. Okay? So we need, when we learn about conjunctions, then we understand, oh, this is the principle. This is where it comes from. This is where the principle is from. Okay? Where we start looking at patterns in the chart. And then we are entering Nabhas Yogas, in essence. In the context of conjunctions, we are interested in four brahas, or five including nodes, conjoined in one sign. And we have to understand why is this called Pravraja Yoga. So, let's do that. Four or more planets will cause Pravraja Yoga if they are conjoined. Now, the results will be there. The person, now this is regardless of where the conjunction happens, the person will always be respecting of a higher spiritual cause or idol. Okay? This is always there. They may not respect gurus. They may not respect religion, but they will always be respecting of a higher spiritual cause or ideal which they will believe is their own. Right. Okay? Hmm. This takes many different forms. You get people who start communities away from society. Hmm. The society is not good enough. Their religion is not good enough. We must be free. We must be together. We must be able to live the way we want, regardless of society. We must be independent. You know? Why do we need to wear clothes? We'll all be naked. Why do we need to eat the food they like? We'll only have fruit. Why must we follow that diet plan? We will only have milk. That, this Prabhraja Yoga causes that type of idea. Hmm. Okay? Such people will also be very fond of distant places to go and visit. So you can have people who are regular, uh, you know, uh, homemakers, hmm. uh, or people, what I call griha, uh, griha, some people who are just living a normal life, but they have Raja Yoga. Then what happens? You ask them, where would you like to go on vacation? Oh, I want to go to those mountains where there's nobody living and nobody has been there. Or I want to go to those distant distant islands which nobody, I just want to be alone on the island, maximum my family, but that's it, I want to be alone on the island. So this Prabhraja Yoga is causing this desire to somehow break free of society. Okay? Yeah, I, uh, since you said of this, I know of somebody who has this uh, yoga and uh, then the person is always like, why do I need to do a nine to five job? Why can't I travel? Why, why do I need to be bound by things like everybody else? Why can't I have invite change in my life? So it's making so much sense where this is coming from. Yeah. There's another aspect of this though. Okay. If these four planets sit in Kendra, we say the Kendra are the four petals of the Muladhara Chakra. All right. All right. So we're getting into the spiritual parts of the chant. We say it's uh, the, the, the Muladhara Chakra is supposed to be the lowest chakra among the seven because it's the foundation. And it's called Mula Adhara because it is Adhara holding, holding up Mula, the root. It's holding up the root. Okay? And this, is, this root is the one which connects us to the earth like gravity. Mm -hmm. And it is connecting us to Bhuloka. Or any Loka we sit in, it's connecting us to that Loka, but distinctly Bhuloka is the one required requiring Muladhara Chakra to be functioning, all right? There's nothing lower than Muladhara. There are Talas, but, be, but as far as we talk about chakras holding us to the earth, it's Muladhara. Right. This Muladhara has four petals, and these four petals are the Kendra Bhava from Lagna. Okay? Right. Now, if this yoga happens in a Kendra, the weight of, that, of those planets on that petal is so heavy that the petal is going to break. Four out of seven planets have decided we're just going to sit here. That petal, that leaf is going to break. Now, have you seen the lotus? The lotus is resting in a pond, right? And we are talking about a four-petal lotus. There are the four kendras. Right. Others, and the rest is water. Yeah. Right. All the other houses in the chart are water. Okay. Compared to the kendra, none of them are more important than the kendra. That is why the Kendra is the most important. Okay? And imagine one of those leaves of the lotus breaking. All the other leaves are going to start drowning now. Yes. This causes Brabraja Yoga. And the person is starting to break from society. And there's a risk of poverty. Okay? There's a risk of poverty. And the positive, this will cause sannyasa. 
okay? Taking formal vows, all right? That is the way to get out of it in a positive way. In a negative way, the person is on the street. Hmm. If tent load is involved, they are more likely to take sannyasa, okay? Hmm. Hmm. If tent load is not involved, they don't even know what they should be doing. Oh my God. That becomes a problem. If any of these planets become combust, congratulations. <laughs> because in such a case, those four planets become ashes. Oh my or God. let's say it becomes one planet is combust, now there are three planets left. Hmm. Two planets combust, two planets left. One pla all three planets combust, only the sun is left. And the sun has said, I have saved you, congratulations. The petal will not break. Okay. So, so in that case, the person becomes very atheist. Uh, uh, he will take up, uh, he will take up sannyas or something, because sun has taken the power and sun is the soul, or it's it's the higher energy. So it will take. Actually, what's happened is that sun has saved the person from sannyasa and as prabraja and renunciation. The petal won't break. The person will be part of society. Prasha statement. If any one of these planets in the four planet or more combinations is combust, the person will have wealth. Okay. Just one combust, the four person will have wealth. As long as it's this, that the scale has become less than four, the person will have wealth. Okay. So, and if a person has these Pravraja Yogas, the more combustion, the better to live in samsara. Hmm. Because sun, looks at, sun is like Shiva looking at Kama Deva. If one Graha joins too close to him, Basma. That's how, sun, that's how Shiva looks at it. The sun works the same way. All right? Oh, look, that was a grahat. Why did he interrupt my meditation? Basma. All right? <laughs> Done. Problem solved. So, so combustion is a very negative concept unless these grahas are joining and piling up on a sign. Then you want combustion to happen to stay happy in this planet. Right. Otherwise, it can be very difficult. It becomes positive if there's renunciation. This yoga is positive with renunciation. Now, but things get a bit odd if it's not in Kendra. Because then it's the, the yoga is in, is in the water. It's outside the petals, right? So now this becomes very funny. If in Kona, that's fifth or ninth house, the person becomes wealthy from spirituality. This is very weird. All right? Absolutely. This is, this doesn't, this we look at and say, how did that happen? Okay? So four, pla four or more planets joined in fifth or ninth house. So mm. Kona here is not three Kona. It's just Kona, fifth or ninth. Mm. So if such a person takes to a spiritual path, they will have Raja Yoga. Beautiful. <laughs> because the fifth and ninth houses are the places where the wealth is. So there's no choice. The spirituality must give Raja Yoga. Okay? Okay. So you, what he is, was running away from, what he was running away from is running after him. You could say that also. I don't know what the person is running away from or running after, unless I see the Lagna. Lagna may not like the Prabhraja. It's possible like Nesh is saying, oh, this Prabhraja is in 12th house or 8th house. I don't want it. Hmm. Like Nesh could say that, right? Like if, if you have all these planets in 5th house, but like Nesh has gone to 6th house. So he looks behind and says, no, this Prabhraja will give me loss. So Lagnesh is, Lagnesh is the one who is deciding. And sometimes our own decisions are not good for us. It's possible. Okay. Right. Yes. So, so some people accommodate it, some people don't. I have seen charts of very prominent leaders of ashrams who have four planets in the fifth house. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they are a huge success. And spiritual. They took two hours. Okay? Mm -hmm. So my recommendation, if you have them in the fifth or ninth house, it's time you make a business out of spirituality. Now, the thing is, having covered these Kendra and Kona, all right, we are left with the remaining houses. And there are six remaining houses because Kendra and Kona makes up half the chart. So the six remaining houses are going to produce one of the six vices or repu. This is where it gets very peculiar and, and, and it, we have to be careful when touching these parts of the chart. See, if you have four or more planets join the second house, it causes very high karma. Now, this lust is not karma necessarily for a relationship or its physical intimacy. It is also karma for objects. Okay? Yes. Like the person, in truth, it's karma for either people or objects. They're high desires. They want to, uh, they want to control these things, actually. 
um there's an aspect of collectors type collectors type uh, yes yes i i just use the word hoarding the problem is they're also hoarding emotions right in this case people's emotions you know black book of phone numbers this is also karma okay yeah. now if in the third house there's a high amount of krodha this can be directed in a very positive direction all right but there's a lot of anger and krodha which is in in the person if they are in the sixth house there is lobha greed they wish to accumulate more this is somehow connected to the karma but instead where karma is possessing people and objects lobha is accumulating people and objects all right so it's not about necessarily the chase it's about what is in the account afterwards okay so they have more people around them all the time they want people to be around them pamper them and things like that it could be usually this tends to focus more on objects however okay. all right yes um but these are very similar you did somehow uh, you you will want uh, you'll usually put these two together second and sixth house all right okay. you'll tend to put them together when you're seeing them um um the easiest way i can put it across is the second house is interested in the chase for the object or the person the sixth house is interested in the result of the chase okay now if many planets are joined the eighth house the person has a high level of moha this is obsession this also looks very much like the second house but here in the obsession is a, is usually something which lasts for a certain amount of time and is occupying their mind So here let's say the person has an obsession with iPhones. All right? This is this means that they will be completely obsessed in looking at that iPhone. I have met people who sat at a, a, during burial ceremonies and were making sure they kept tabs on whichever game they were playing on their iPhone. Grown men, all right? So it's a bit crazy, but it's causing moha. They're obsessed. These people don't need many objects. They just need one singular one. All right? Hmm. this can also give moha towards people hmm. now the, the, the what moha does is is that for a temporary period of time you're obsessed with the ideal of some object or person and after some time that that you will realize the truth of that and then when that happens usually after a year having seen the truth you become surprised that you were occupied with that activity yes. and then you move on to the next obsession okay Now when this happens to people they start they end up marrying somebody because oh small there's a very strong attraction towards that person obsessed but the person but the ideal of the person they are attracted to this person is very smart and very intelligent and they have a good job so they must be very good people image portrayed image yes they get of they always fall for the image of something all right the image of something is what they fall for and this becomes a problem and but the thing is every moha breaks after a year and then they realize they married a philandra who has all a good job it, 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 let me take something very clear and and that is such a person may fall in love with a pujari a priest hmm. and then they didn't realize the puji, the priest is smoking this and that and drinking this and that and doing all sorts of nonsense but he's a priest still <laughs> so the moha doesn't see that it only sees that he's a priest he she's a she's a great teacher or a priest as well so that's eight house many planets 11th house many planets matsyarya jealousy okay they are very jealous and wish to occupy more all right mm. and they compare all the time somebody got this i want that mm. 12th house madha intoxication mm mm-hmm. So this is about detaching from the world which fits the 12th house very nicely. Now, all these yogas, all of them, whether good or bad, kindra kon or otherwise, are all happening because in the past life the person took a spiritual vow to God. They had actually gone and taken a vow. Mm-hmm. And then if it is happening in dushtana, they broke the vow in the last life. Mhm. if in other houses they maintain the vow okay mm. which vow the strongest planet will indicate which vow they took and then when you read the shlokas especially brihad jataka is very nice elaborate on this if you get swami vidyaranya's uh, no uh, not vidyaranya swami uh, ooh 
I forget the name. Uh, there's a Swami who has translated Briyajataka, the best translation I've seen. A blue book. It's an old book uh, from Ramakrishna Mission, I believe he's from. So, um, so in, in, he gives a very nice translation of, the, of this yoga, Prabhraja Yoga, and he says, oh, if it is Mars, it was, they, they, they were part of, a, of an ashram which wear red clothes, like the Buddhists, they believed in Ahimsa. If it was Mercury, then he elaborates then. It's Surya, then he elaborates, like if it's stronger there. So he gives each of them, okay? So with that, you get to know what was the renunciation. Now, if Saturn, they belonged to the Nagas, Naga Baba, Yes. Another translation, naked sadhu. Hmm. Okay. Another meaning, the person could be part of an ashram of people who are occupied with being free from the bounds of society. They are walking around naked all the time. Maybe there's free sexuality going on. Hmm. Okay. You have to be thinking. Some of these things happen also in the US. Happens in Europe. And they're independent of spiritual institutions. So the philosophy is Saturn. Maybe they believe they should be able to live free in nature with their own rules and smoke whatever they want or drink whatever they want. Utopian Saturn likes that. Yeah, Saturn yes. makes that. that that's Saturn, that. Saturn gives addictions, that's why. Remember, he likes entertainment. Okay. okay. So, so, now these, this is something you have to keep in mind when you read the chart, that you could get such fringes of society. This is enhanced significantly, these sins, these vices, by the conjunction of the sixth law. Then it becomes very negative. Okay? The reason is that in this life, if it is one of these vices which get activated, they had the vice in the last life which broke their sannyasa. And in this life, God is teaching them that that, that vice was not worth keeping. Whereas if it's the fifth, these other Kendra Kona Yogas, they are living that life. And sometimes there's a bit of vice involved, but they're living that life. Okay? Mm. Yeah. So Either way, it's a sadhu from last life. It's a beautiful, it's a revolution. It's a revolution in itself. I think I have a chart to exemplify this. Okay. It's Lizzie Borden. Now I'm just going to move the video feed again and um, now in this person's chart I noticed that there are five planets joined in the 11th house so this is including Ketu keep in mind so I'm allowed to count five in this case all right had it just been four with and Ketu was there I could not say this was Prabhraja hmm. but the dilemma is in this case being in the 11th house we expect there'll be a high level of Matsyarya all right hmm. now I have tried to also decide the order of beneficence because I want to understand what's going on in this chart. Right. I'm going to use this in the next slide, but uh, I found out Jupiter is exalted. Moon hmm. is in non sign. Hmm. So the order will be Jupiter on top, Moon next, Venus, nothing significant, Sun, nothing significant, nothing significant, Ketu. So the groups have become Jupiter and Ketu, Moon and Sun, and Venus is, in, is squashed by these two bribing gangs, by the way. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, we do expect regardless that if these five planets are conjoined in the 11th house, it gives intense jealousy. Intense. <laughs> Jupiter is the strongest planet. Hence, the jealousy is pertaining to wealth. Hmm. Right. Ketu is the weakest. And thus, property is also the focus because these are in a group together. Right. Strongest and weakest. So the whole focus is property and wealth. Right. Okay. Right. So could now, it also mean that, uh, could it also mean because of the presence of the uh, fifth, uh, 11th Lord also over there, it becomes more intensified? Um, you could argue that. Yes, you could. But I'm, I'm more interested in it becoming a serious vice if the sixth Lord is involved. Keep that in mind. All right. Okay. It's still going to be a vice. It depends on how serious a vice it is. That's all we're debating. Okay. Okay. But this is serious. This is a problem. All right. Hmm. Now, I use some things when I look at this. You remember I said Lagnesh is important? Yes. So you see, where's Lagnesh? Lagnesh seems yes. to be Mercury placed here in 12th house. All right? Hmm. Now, the Dushtana from the Lagnesh, specifically 6th, 8th, 12th, hmm. is where you're acting based on the three 
does of Brahma. Does are the three, uh, what we call the um, the um, yes, yes. The, I was going to use a Dhamma different term, Dhan. but yes, the three does are, as you pointed out, Daya, Dharma, Dhamma, and Dan. Dhan. Okay, and these are in essence. Daya means compassion. What is your compassion? These the Dushtanas will tell me your compassion from the Lagnesh is seen in the sixth house. To what extent do you accept that somebody should be given mercy? What do you think this person believes about giving mercy with Mars and Rahu in the sixth? Not, like not at all. Not at all. Merciless. Merciless. Okay? There's no daya here. Yes. Okay. And then we have the topic of what we call dana. Dana is what the manushyas should do, right? They should be giving. They should stop keeping wealth all the time, right? They should not accumulate for themselves. They have to give it. Dana. They have to give dana. Yeah. All right? So this is manusha karma. Manusha Upadesha. This was Raksha Upadesha in sixth. Eighth is Manusha Upadesha. Right. The twelfth from Lagnesh is your Deva Upadesha, which is Dharma. Suppress yourself. Hold yourself back. Don't enjoy all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I noticed that this is in the enjoyment house from Lagnesh. Mm -hmm. And I get worried because this is in the Raksha's house from Lagnesh. Mm -hmm. Something is going on here, which is a mess. All right. What do you think will happen if we take away her enjoyment? Do you think she'll resort to this? Yes. So let's see the next slide. Same chart. Okay. So what happens? Now, in Venus Dasha, Jupiter Anta Dasha. I'm getting into Dasha, right? Remember that Jupiter? He's in this Jupiter Keto group, right? Yes. yes. She sells a property she has to her father. Okay. She's selling property to father. I want to know, how is father? Father is this ninth Lord Venus, right? Mm. And he's alone over here. He's going to get squashed between Jupiter, Ketu, Moon, and Sun. Right. So she right. sells him. Now, the essence of this is not timing what happens to father, but at this stage, it shows she's getting money from property, right? Right. Jupiter, Ketu, Ketu likes to give conjoined property away. It was a rental property that was sold to father. That was hers, but she sold it. Now, in this, this is happening in, let me see, it was Jup Venus, Jupiter, so it's over here. You see, I've taken Sri Jyoti Star, and it gives me the events, and Dasha very nicely sold property and all this. So, Venus, Jupiter, sold property to father. Now, a significant row happens, hmm. causing her and her sister to go on holiday to cool down in the same Venus, Jupiter. So she goes on vacation with sister. Mm. After about a month, she comes back from the vacation. Mm. All right? It's still Venus Jupiter. Mm -hmm. mm. And then she returns. After four days after having come home from the holiday, she kills both her parents. Mm. Okay? Mm. And they suspect her of the crime. All right? Yeah. Mm. There was a lot of tension in the family because of property and wealth. And the sister, this, he, she and her sister, this lady and her sister, had gotten some property decades back. And then she sells it to her father on her father's request for a good amount of money. Only for something else to happen later on that nobody knows. At least nobody has said. But the, uh, uh, the, uh, the event that arose after this was that her mom and dad die four days after she comes back from holiday. Nobody knows if it was her, but she was suspected, very strongly suspected, okay? Even for getting rid of evidence of suspicions. Oh now, as an astrologer, I would have said, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's very susceptible to kill her parents, okay? Yeah. And I do know father is going to get squashed when this yoga happens. Because Venus is the one left out between Jupiter, Ketu, Moon, and Sun. And I know that, this, that she has a very high amount of jealousy. And the whole reason she got the property to begin was because she pressed her father a decade back to give her the property because she, the father had given property to somebody in the, uh, somebody in the family. And when she gets, let's go of this, the parents are dead. So when you see these combinations, be careful. There is such a very strong desire for that object that they cannot help themselves. 
okay? We can obviously argue she had become so jealous because of something parents did mm -hmm. that she decided to take it out on the parents. It's very clear in the chart. All can right? I ask a question here, Vishri, which is okay. not related to the chart, but a spiritual question, if I may say so. But yes. the chart is telling me, the chart is telling me that I have done this in the past life. Because mm -hmm. this, the chart was the essence of my past life. That means mm -hmm. I've done it in my past life. So if I'm repeating it again in this lifetime, yeah. am I not entrenching myself firmly into more bad results in the next life or lifetimes to come? Absolutely. Absolutely it's happening. It is very common for people to repeat their past lives. Very common. Okay? Oh. It just means God saw what you did he looked at the karma and said, you didn't learn. Go back and try again. Yeah. And that can happen many times. God can and keep sending you back and say, try again, try again, try again. Until you figure it out. Now I we know, know for two lives times she hasn't figured it out. All right? This is so right. And you know what I tell my clients or my students? I say, how would you feel if you had to repeat class 8, 12 times? So by the time you are, uh, you know, uh, 26, you're still in class 8. So this is what you're doing with your chart. So think again before you're doing it again. Well, uh, in the early times of me starting my Jyotish career, um, a client came to me and uh, was very accommodating and wanted me to read the chart. And uh, then it came up to the point where um, they said, I thank you for the reading. Uh, but I, And I said, would you like to do a remedy for, the, for the, a certain issue that he was experiencing in his life? And he said, he, does, he believes in karma, but he doesn't believe in remedy because he believes that he is somebody who is doing karma and he has to experience his karma and go through it. And I said, that's very novel and I like that approach. My only question is, after going through the karma, how are you sure that you have learned anything? Mm. If you do the mantra, you are sure you learn something. If you go through the karma, it's possible you could repeat the karma in your next life. Because you maybe didn't learn anything. Maybe you found yourself bound to repeat the karma. Mm. That difference is coming from mantra or another form of the yogas. We have five, remember? Spristanga yoga and all that. Okay, mantra yoga is just one part. All right. Mm. So now this this is what I wanted to bring to four. Now I have also jumped because I went from four planet to five planet yogas in one chart. Mm. Okay. But trying to show that this is Prabhraja or four planets with a node. Okay. Now why wasn't this person so poor? Because Prabhraja should give poverty, yes? That's Prabhraja. Now the difference is here that among these planets, Jupiter and Venus that are conjoined in Cancer are combust. Okay. So it's actually not like a four or five planet yoga. It's more like two planets have been wiped clean, Jupiter and Venus. So it's okay? three planet yoga. Principally, yes. But I will still interpret it as Prabhraja. Hmm. Because no matter what, the vice doesn't change. The vice is still there. All right. It's just that she will enjoy wealth. She lived in a very wealthy family. Very wealthy. And yet she went ahead and murdered her parents, if we can see. Because of jealousy over property. What to do? And is she going to take it with her? <laughs> Wherever she so goes. Now you can't keep the property after you die. You know, sometimes the karma you do could cause issues later on. She, she died from pneumonia, a lung disease. Okay. Hmm. Lung diseases come from Rahu. Right, yes. So sometimes what you do can be the cause of you leaving this planet. Yeah, and it's more in the sixth house again, the disease. Yes, that's right. The sixth, actually, this is from Lagnesh, it's in sixth, but from Lagna. Rahu is Lord of Kumba here, sixth Lord, and Mangal is Lord in Mesha, eighth Lord. So they are both joined here. So this will eventually cause disease. That's right. Peculiar that we can see the karma happening before it happens and she does it and she thinks she has free will. Peculiar, right? Right. Yes. Astrology is not supposed to impede on our free will. It's not supposed to. We have at most 33% free will, but circumstances are the remaining 66. So this question that I want to ask you, Yavishti, is that People are generally talking about free will and uh, astrology and all. But my question here is that had she, did she have in her chart, did she have it within her to be magnanimous and let go of what had happened between her father and herself? 
could she have risen to that level when she saw that they probably she saw there was something wrong with the father did with the money or something and could she have been magnanimous and left it or was she was it really so fatalistic uh, as that can be seen in the chart that that even did have to happen see i have been very cheeky and not included some principles of which are the namamsha here but um as my disclaimer the navamsha can tell me a lot about the per, the dharma that the person accepts hmm. unless this masra had some to the navamsha lagna she would not have accommodated this okay one of these is associated with the navamsha lagna which made her compelled to do this activity okay so step 1 for example i think her navamsha lagna scorpio now never mind take one step back. now the amount of free will is depending on the upachayas the upachayas are exactly one third of the chart third house sixth house tenth house eleventh house these are upachayas okay mm -hmm. now there is a combination given in the jataka parijata that if the six if the lords of upachaya are in upachaya brahma has been born okay mm -hmm. because it is somebody who has absolute complete free will 33% complete now the implication of this is that if the lords of the upachaya are in upachaya then free will gets more so you would need third lord in third house to get one fourth of this 33% so let's see half of 33 is about 18 point something right and then half of that is close nine to some percent. nine or something like that some now the um, so you get 9% for every upachaya which is occupied by the lord of the upachaya so there's none here except here you see in 11th house the 11th lord is in the 11th house so the person has about 9% free will so the rest is not free number so, one okay so if the person has a 9% free will then that free will but but she must but she must yes. have the in which will matter to... does she have the free will in this house 11th house matter okay hmm. not in this as six not in this house matter here in the 5th house this she didn't have free will she had free will as to whether she would sell that property to her father or not she was not compelled nobody pushed her okay hmm. all right right yes now i would argue then this is but this is pravraja so this 11th lord moon is it combust is it in a is it close enough to the sun and i see it's far away from the sun 13 degrees away from the sun okay hmm so it's not combust so she cannot earn wealth of her own free will she is going to use she is likely going to have, have be put in a situation where the prabraja is taking over had it been combust she would exit the prabraja she won't she is actually entering prabraja with the free will so there's not much free will Okay. It's not much that little 9% she had is not there. So uh, what you're saying is that the times when it's fatalistic that we have to do certain things but then when when is the lesson learned where is the how could the lesson be learned in that case? I mean you're coming back again to class 8. It depends on what niche. Okay. so we'll keep this for a later time we'll keep a spiritual yeah. discussion with you for a later time and this is yeah. interesting dear yeah. so that's how this prabraj is manifesting and it's a massive conjunction but you see we are able to derive what's going on even to the extent we know that father could be suffering because of this all right yes yeah. yeah somebody is going to ask me then how did mother get in the middle of this it was not her own mother it was her stepmother okay so it's not the fourth lord which is involved in this it is the we say stepmother is in sixth house okay stepmother is like we it's like a sibling to the mother some people use that term so the actual stepmother is from this kumbha which is either rahu or shani we know it was rahu obviously okay yeah okay now let us go on and see what else we have to cover here um now having done this we have done prabraja and we've done the four planets and i would like to talk about five planets because we have talked about five planets all right just right? so to understand what's going on 
So the, the, the easy term I give is when five planets join, it two groups squash, squash one bystander. Okay? Because you'll have two pairs going to the side and one bystander in the middle being hit by that. And these two groups could be positive or negative groups, but whatever they have unraveled will be impact the bystander. Okay? Now, so we have one of these yogas, which is given in Saravali as well. I'm biased. Saravali again. So yeah. what about if Sun and Moon and Mars and Jupiter and Venus can join? It's yeah. so beautiful that I can we can sit here and debate Shastras and unearth the exact meaning. Now, conjoined, it produces the following results. One result, blind from birth. This sounds drastic. Well, I'll try to explain why it is said. Devoid of parents, my goodness. Subjugated to much grief, always dejected and fond of singing. <laughs> that fond of singing is an interesting one. A melancholic blind musician. Interesting, right? Now, the three groups are who's most benefic? Jupiter was on top. Put the list here, Jupiter's on top. Mars is the worst of these planets. Right. So he's on the So Jupiter and Mars will form the first yoga. Separated from mother has many mothers is the result we're supposed to give. We say the person has the blessings of Atri. So when it says devoid of parents, distinctly it must mean mother more particularly. Yeah. Okay? Jupiter Mars can do this. I dare say it does not always do this, but it gives many mothers. Okay? Yeah. Yes. But the reason is because of this. Now, there's something more that's coming up here about parents. So it's not Jupiter Mars alone which has done this. Now, on the other side, we had Sun and Venus forming the other yoga. Why? Because if I go in the row, row uh, in, in the order, Jupiter was there, Venus is next in line, who else? Yeah. Then Moon came, and then we had uh, Sun, what, and what Sun and then Mars as well. So Jupiter and Sun, sorry, Jupiter and Mars form the first group, Sun and Venus form the second group, and Moon is in between. Hmm. Okay? So we're still using the principle from superplanet conjunction. So we have to go back and learn that to understand this. Yes, so do watch the first video if you want to learn, the second video if you want to know more on this. Exactly. So what do we have here? Now we say that the Sun and Venus, when they conjoin, the Sun suffers a lot because Venus has a specific role of debilitating the Sun. Okay? I know, it sounds odd because on the other hand, Venus will lift the Sun up, but in a certain way, in a certain night, in a certain perspective. Somebody will say, but Visti, it also makes sense because Venus is the actual physical eye and it has become burnt by the sun. So it still makes sense. Yes. The idea is that this is supposed to cause some issue with eyesight. Now, don't get carried away. There are, there are houses to see the eyesight from. We don't need to rely on just planetary conjunctions. So when these conjoin for about a month or a half of a month, don't worry. They're, if they were a person, not everybody born, they would be blind. Okay. But the idea comes from this. Maybe there's some issue with eyesight. Maybe at one point in time, the person needs to do, uh, do something to improve their eyesight. Maybe they have weak eyesight and they get laser surgery and it improves their eyesight. So something to, about eyesight is there with sudden means can join. And then we have moon in the middle and moon alone will make the person fond of singing. And the person will have a suffering of dejection and problems from birth because of the other two groups joining the moon. Right. Because the moon is your motivation to be part of this planet. It's also that which gives you your birth. It is the place where your mother is. It is the head of Shiva as well, affecting your health. So when these two groups start joining the moon, if one group is negative, the moon becomes negative. If one group is positive, the moon becomes positive. And that's why these results are given. Mm -hmm. Very simply put. Yes. We're just still doing our groups, pairs and pairs, and one in the middle. Right. And, and right. It, it, it makes a lot of sense now, instead of just, you know, just telling people that, yes, you could, you could be blind from birth, which is something so drastic. And you can't even tell a person that you're going to be blind from birth. Uh, you wouldn't know how to tell a person that first and foremost, or devi devoid of parents, or telling people that you would be subjugated to too much grief. It, it would be a little too on the offside to go into all these things. But now when you see this, when you are able to break this up into different components, you can say that, look, it can happen like that. You can have some problem with your eyes, but which can be taken care of. Mm -hmm. you can the, the idea of understanding the principle also, 
um, because uh, we are not supposed to use this independently of the rest of the chart. I will never say the person is going to be blind from birth unless I also see, oh, maybe there's some issue going on with the with the uh, houses of eyesight could be the second house. Some people will say, look at 12th house to see right or left eye. Some Jaminians will say, look at 10th from Lagna and 10th from Moon to see the eyesight as well. So there's a whole addendum of information that we have to accompany with that. But I do know that there might be some issue with some irritation in the eyes at least, which I also still have to look for. All right. But the, now I understand the reason why. It's because of Sun and Venus conjoined. That's the yoga that's causing this. And I'll look at their lordships in the chart. All right. Now, um, to to uh, um, now remember, if any of these planets other than Jupiter is exalted or known sign, throw this all up in the air and see where it lands again. <laughs> it's be different. All right. It's all going to be different because then they will take over Jupiter's role as being the most auspicious planet, and mm. then none of this will apply. Okay. Right. What if Jupiter is debilitated? Then he's become the most negative planet. He goes to the bottom of the list, below Mars. So we have uh, Moon and Jupiter conjoining in that case, if I'm Let not mistaken. Uh, yes, it will be like that. But if Jupiter is debilitated, Mars is exalted. So Mars is going on top again. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll still get Mars-Jupiter. But the difference is Jupiter is the weaker one and Mars is blessing. The weaker Jupiter and Jupiter yeah, becomes very also have the saint blessing the sinner because, as you said, the debilitating planet supporting the uh, uh, sorry, the exalted planet supporting the debilitated planet. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, once we get the principle, all this is easy. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, how does one book a reading with you? On I'll my website, srigaruda.com. Okay. That's as simple as it. On the front page itself, it says consultation, click. <laughs> I made it very simple. So, entering the next topic, six planets conjoining. I promise I have examples, but I, I want to show a bit more before I get into some examples. And namely, that now we're taking a very long yoga. And now I'm going to, again, use Saravali to understand this. Jupiter with Venus, with Mercury, with Moon, with Mars and Saturn joining to give the following results. Pure at all times, yet will seek sexual union with many women. These two combinations and predictions co sound completely at ends with each other. <laughs> but it says, this is what it states, and we have, we'll understand why in a minute. Favored by the king will be a minister, wealthy, will have children and happiness. So we're going to unearth the three groups. They're like three gangs at work. Mm. And that's the dilemma also. That's why these oscillating predictions occur. Who is the most benefic? Jupiter. Who is the most malefic? Saturn in this year. They're at each other ends of, of the scale here. So they will join each other and give results. It, Jupiter and Saturn yogas will usually give children because it's called a Brahma yoga. Mm. This will also give purity and royal favor because Brahma yoga can also imply focusing on Brahman. Okay. Hmm. Royal favor always occurs when Jupiter's blessing is there. Here, Saturn is being blessed by Jupiter. Hmm. All right. So therefore, Saturn, who was supposed to be impure, has become pure. Yeah. Saturn, who is interested in, who is, we say Saturn is like Brahma, you know, hmm. going around the zodiac. So when he gets blessed, he ensures that there'll be progeny. Okay. Hmm. And the royal favor is coming like a servant who is getting royal favor. Hmm. All right? Hmm. Now, because Jupiter is the one who blesses with royal favor wherever he goes. When you read the Shastras, Jupiter is always blessing, royal favor, royal favor, minister, minister, royal favor, everywhere he goes. Then we have the second group. Now, we had Venus, who is not as benefic as Jupiter, and Mars, who is... Not, not as malefic as Saturn. So then these two will give each other, will join to give results. And now it becomes very easy to understand. This is a Bahustri yoga. Seek sexual yes. union with many. Now we understand Saravali. Otherwise, at first it looked like an oscillating factor or prediction. How did that come up? The last yoga is between the remaining planets we had, Moon and Mercury, the ones left out. And they are giving wealth and happiness. Distinctly, what is happening is Mercury is blessing the moon. Now, when Mercury blesses the moon, I will say there are some 
parts of this prediction I will have some negative connotations about. Like the person is considered a mild unmadana yoga when these join. The person could be very spontaneous. They could actually have an issue with water in their in their head area. There's a like gravity issue with water. So they, when we get into that uh, about health and disease, then this becomes relevant. And but then what also happens is is that there can also be a blessing of great authorship. So I would have added authorship, writing ability, writing skill. The wealth that is coming is the wealth of books because the wealth that Mercury is giving to the moon is the wealth of knowledge and books. <laughs> And that is what is giving happiness. In fact, the person will be a, a fond of joking all the time, always joking. Okay, making jokes, talking, mimicking people also. They like to mimic people, all right, like actors do. So these are the reasons for the results. Now it was easy. <laughs> Before that, this yeah. prediction looked so odd. And now we also know it is based on these three groups. Okay. Because it works like three parallel groups, you get oscillating personalities. Pure at all times, yet will seek sexual union with women. What is going on? All right? This is a bifurcated personality, parallel personality. Bi all right? Yeah. But not bipolar, maybe. Maybe multiple personality disorder. But certainly in that realm, we're looking at that. It does look very odd. And that's the reason is, it's three different groups of grahas who are working. Okay? Right. In tandem. All right. Now, I think, yes, here is a chart. I'll just move the video feed again. And um, this is, uh, this was the Tsarina of Russia, the last Tsarina of Russia. Yes, okay. Like there's a Tsar and there's a Tsarina, okay? And she has a bunch of planets in the Lagna, all right? Hmm. What would we expect first? Before we get into the unearthing each of the results, we do know she is supposed to be very devout, she will love solitude. She will love spiritual people, spiritual places. She may believe in a strong spiritual ideal. The strongest planet in this yoga must be the exalted moon. So she will believe strongly in the institution of the worship of the Divine Mother. Okay? Right. Somehow she will follow that ideal. So this seems to be the prominent aspect of this. Now we understand some of the stories behind her. We do know a very prominent aspect of her life was that when she gave uh, when she gave birth to the her son the last child of hers was her son that son was suffering from hemophilia and she went and found a healer rasputin a very prominent person from siberia yeah. who was part of the who was a priest of that ch of the churches uh, well, a large group of churches there and he helped heal her son, and she had great respect and actually followed some of the principles of the church that Rasputin was delivering upon. Okay. There are other, some more conspicuous aspects of what he was into, they said, hmm. and she also followed that, a bit more hedonistic aspects of spirituality, which I will not comment on right now. But it was, but you can see the great, um, the great, what we call, um, uh, the, the, the great, um, the, 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 a person who is very devout because of this great yoga in the Lagna. You can see that as part of her personality. Hmm. Now, I would have argued she may have even considered that in her later years she would become a nun with this yoga. There are many, there are many uh, uh, prominent uh, heads of state which do this. Yes. Now, now um, I do notice that in the order of beneficence, moon is exalted. Now, Rahu is also, but moon is a benefic, so he takes precedence. Mm. Okay? Rahu comes next, also exalted. Venus is in on sign, he's next. Then Mercury, then Sun, then Mars. So we form three pairs. Moon nice. and Mars, because the first most benefic and most malefic. Rahu and Sun are next, second in line. And Venus and Mercury are the remnants in the middle, if you will, all right? But there are three groups. Now we could get into the prediction of what these mean, and that's part, that'll be part of reading the person's personality. Moon and Mars, very philanthropic, strong drive, will work fast, think fast, will also speak fast, will not like to waste time, okay? Wealthy also because of that. Very, very, uh, very also what we call entrepreneurial. Rahu and Sun. Sure. Sorry? Sure. Could be a show-off, 
But that depends. Who is stronger? Rahu is blessing the sun because Rahu was the exalted one. Yeah. All right. So the sun is becoming better. More yeah. wealth. Which type of wealth? Foreign wealth. Hmm. Okay. Rahu wealth. Okay. Wealth from foreign countries. The person will, like you said, be a show off because sun is getting very strong now. The person will be somebody whom is, um, the term is uh, not modest. Okay. Yes. So these are the for, could it also be uh, read as stickler for uh, protocol and stickler for uh, hierarchy? Because of the sun being strong, I could have argued that, but it's Rahu joined the sun. Rahu is junglic, okay? Likes to meet up on work unshaven, you know, yeah. hair is not set in place. Ketu but, would be the stickler. Okay? I'm sorry for interrupting, but just a question here is that sun is getting uh, prominent because of the Rahu. So sun is all about protocol. It's all about, so could she... Absolutely, about order in time. Everything yes. should be on time. Yes. That's right. Now, and then we have Venus and Mercury left, which is a pure Rajas Yoga. Pure Rajas Yoga. And distinctly, Mercury is becoming prominent in this because Venus was more benefic than Mercury. So maybe the person is getting a great artistic ability mm. and great authorship and writing ability. Okay? So like that, that's how I unearth this chart. Now, what I wanted to bring to four is Dasha. She marries in Rahu Dasha, Moon Anta Dasha. Hmm. Okay? Notably, so Rahu, if I take Rahu first, Rahu Dvaha Dasha, Rahu will give results of the sun. The sun here is fourth lord. Do you notice this A7 over there? Yeah. This is the Aruda of the seventh house. Yes. Now, I, I, I don't wish to bring a different topic into four, but the seventh house and the Aruda of the seventh house are both prominent in giving marriage. You see, Sun is the giver of that, and Rahu joins it. It happened in Rahu Mahadasha. The Anta Dasha was of the moon. And guess who moon is joined? Moon is supposed to give results of Mars, seventh lord. Oh, that was too easy. You know? Hmm. Regularly, I would have found, if people didn't know this principle, they would not know who would give results of what in this combination. Everybody's giving results of anybody, you know? Yes. It's very mixed up. Hmm. All right? So with this, we get that. Now, notice that Mars is supposed to be weak here, right? The weakest? Yeah. Yes. So and now he's becoming the strongest due to Moon Exalted? Yes. So should we expect that her spouse is rising to a very high amount of prominence? Possib he, uh, he's possible. He's the son of Russia. Yeah. I'm sorry? Sorry? After marriage, yes. possible. After marriage, possible. Yes. Yes. Uh, but I should be expecting, if Moon will give all its blessings to Mars, Mars must be wealthy. Mars must be well-placed. He is the Tsar of Russia. Okay? He is blessed. So that is how we would also look at this. So that was, that was one aspect of her chart. I have the same chart on the next slide. You see, it doesn't look different, but the notes have changed here. All right? All right here. Right so, so now, watch... We say that for women, kids will arise from the ninth house. Right. All right? right. Fifth house men, ninth house women. Because we, men don't have a garba. There's no garba. The garba chakra is very undeveloped. Okay? For men. So the garba chakra is in ninth house, whereas the, we, they will still have a manipura in the fifth house. So there are two, there, you see, there are levels of chakra. There's anahata and hridaya. They're not the same. So mm. one, is, one house is anahata, one house is hridaya in this fourth, tenth house. Okay? Now, now, never mind that for now. So kids arise from ninth house for the women, for women. And we say that ninth lord is Saturn. Saturn is ninth lord. It is in Jupiter's sign. Okay. And the Aruda of this, ninth house to ninth lord, same distance from is here, is in Scorpio with Ketu and lorded by Mars. So maybe I could make this inference. Kids will come in antadashas of moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and Ketu. Mm. Okay. But I have to do some monkey tricks, right? Because how did I get moon? Mars is joined the moon. Yeah. Otherwise, moon should not give, right? Moon is not part of this. But Mars is joined the moon. So it will be moon instead of Mars. Otherwise, the list would be Mars, Ketu, Saturn, Jupiter. Okay? Hmm. But Mars is joined moon. So moon, Ketu, Saturn, Jupiter instead. All right? Right. So let us see. So she had a daughter 
moon antadasha, it fits. Okay. Then a daughter in Jupiter's antadasha, it fits in the list. Then another daughter in Jupiter's antadasha, another daughter in Saturn's antadasha, and finally a son in Ketu's antadasha. And these are all associated with these planets, just from the ninth house. Prominently, I wanted to show Mars was supposed to give one of the children because it's joined the moon. Moon gave it instead. Okay? Yeah. So but this is I, just Dasha. Yeah. Can I just tell you one more thing? And that it could be my fabrication. It could be my own mind working. Jupiter, Ketu, Mars, and the sun has, um, he has a problem with the blood. And it's Ketu, Mars is also, uh, you know, Mars is blood. Ketu also creates problems. So during that Dasha that he's born, he's born with a problem with the blood. I would not disagree with you. I will just, uh, what I will do is this though, instead of relying on the Rashi chart to figure this out, because we, I noticed that, that there are some children which are born during moon and there's a child born during Ketu, all right? Hmm. And the one with moon was a daughter and daughters don't suffer from hemophilia. They carry, but they won't suffer from it. But the child with indicated by Ketu did. Yes. What I will do is this, this is the hint, you know. I will take Ketu and see in Navamsha, Hmm. And whichever sign Ketu is in the Navamsha, I'll see that sign back in Rashi Okay. And that may give me a completely different picture because Bhavya is coming from Navamsha. Right. So although the children is the child is coming during Ketu Antadasha, the Bhavya from having the child depends on Ketu in Navamsha. Okay. Otherwise, from Rashi Chat itself, Ketu is strong. It's too strong. I would not say it's bad or negative. I will look at it in Navamsha and then see that sign in Rashi Chat. It may not be in Scorpio Navamsha, but it might be joined the moon or join Mars, okay, in Navamsha, and that will hint at that it's this child who is suffering from the issue, all right? So I would have to check that later. I didn't make that attempt, okay? But the Bhagya of any person who enters your life will be seen from the Antadasha of you meeting them and see the Bhagya in Navamsha. Right, I do that. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, let me see what's on the next slide. Ah, same chart. Third, ex third example of the same chart. You will see nothing has changed except my notes. <laughs> now, the person has 10th Lord Saturn in 8th house, causing Raj Banga Yoga. You will fall from Raj, 10th Lord in 8th house, which happened. They were the last Tsars of Russia, the last rulers. They were murdered. They were murdered, what? murdered ruthlessly. They were murdered. They murdered ruthlessly. It was very brutal. Yes, indeed. Okay. Now, now, what is happening here? The Antadasha, when this event transpired, was the one of Mercury. They were, they were, they had to abdicate. They were exiled and they were killed. Saturn Dasha, Mercury Antadasha. Hmm. Now, Saturn Mercury is usually a good Dasha. Okay. Whereas everybody fears Venus, Saturn, or Saturn, Venus. All right? Everybody fears that Dasha. Rahu, Venus, Venus, Saturn, Saturn, Venus, Venus, Saturn. Go figure. This Mercury is giving results of Venus in the chart. So although everybody is looking at Saturn, Mercury, it's giving results of Saturn, Venus. And that was the negative that transpired. Okay? So with that, we get the full picture. All right? The full picture just by applying the conjunctions. So, this was a heavy conjoined chart. Okay. All right, we have six planets over here, the remaining three are outside. We could principally have had seven if Jupiter was there, eight if Saturn was also joined. But the principle remains the same all throughout the way we will interpret it. Notably, you will see that when planets are of equal number, even number, they tend to be leaving each other alone. There's no, there's no victim, okay? But when we get uneven numbers, three, five, seven, there's a victim involved, okay? Because there's one planet who's not forming a gang, a group, a pair. So that, will, that, is, that is one method that we have to employ when we see conjunctions in specificity. I would just like to end with one principle. None of the Shastras will get into seven planet conjunctions in the groups of conjunctions. None of them will get into that. They will not mention it. All right. And that is because they don't have to. 
When all planets are joined in one sign, it's part of the Navas Yogas. So most Shastras will continue until six planets, and then they'll leave it there. And some people will say, well, then what do we do? It's because there's a Navas Yoga called Gola Yoga, which says all planets in one sign. It, you could call it the singular yoga, the absolute singularity, if you will. The only thing that could oscillate this is the nodes involvement, which means you will get eight planets if one of the nodes joins. Okay. All right? But in essence, this is obviously talking about the Taragrahas and the luminaries, excluding the nodes. So the principle employed therein is, if all planets join one sign, the singular yoga called Gola Yoga arises. It's among the Navas Yogas. It result, its results include one singular focus on God at all times, asceticism, great spirituality, doubtlessness and happiness, complete utter focus on only one thing. We as astrologers will go one step further because we have learned a principle. All right? We know that it is actually three gangs and one person left over. All right? And that one singular planet which is left over is going to be the most prominent aspect of that chart. Okay. So it will tell us the Ishta also? Who is the Ishta of that person and where is the focus going and everything? Because you use the term Ishta, I'm going to be careful. Because the term Ishta can mean two things. It can mean the most auspicious form of God. Because we're talking about Ishta versus Kashta. It can also imply the form that is giving Mukti. These two may not be the same. Okay. okay. Like if Guru is in Lagna, it's very auspicious to worship Shiva. But the Shiva may not be the Ishta Devata. That she form may be different. Hmm. That depends on Avamsha. All right? So that's for a different topic. But I can say that singular graha becomes the focal point of the chart in Gola Yoga. That one graha is the focus and its activity is the focus. So you could have Gola Yogas where moon is the focus worship of the Divine Mother, or healing people, becoming a doctor, somebody who's helping people, giving them food. Moon indicates a mother who's feeding people. All right? It may not be the Ishta, but it can be the focus of the person's life. All right? So we have to find that singular ground to know what is that focus. Okay. With that, I think I've covered all my slides for today. And uh, Anu, is there anything you would like to add? Anything that you would like to ask me at this stage? about what I've showed so far. Uh, well, what you've taught me is uh, literally going, ramifying in my head and I need to really, really go through it so many times to and move into the charts also, uh, taking these, uh, because it will give me a different picture altogether of what I've been doing for so many years. And for that, I'm very grateful. Uh, to you, Vishti. Really very beautiful insight. Every word worth a repeat hearing two, three, four times. Uh, this I, is... I, I hope not too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not complicated. There's so much knowledge in every word that it really does every sentence that it read needs uh, to, you know, work on it on a, on a deeper level. And especially with charts, we will be He's been kind enough to explain it to us with charts, but we need to practice them ourselves to understand them and be bedazzled by their working, honestly speaking. So thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to, to share. Thank you. Uh, on his website, he does give consultation. If you really want to understand your chart, Please do visit his website once. Vishti Larson's website is shrigarura.com and you would find consultations there. There are also uh, courses that we can ask for and uh, you know take up these courses. If you're a serious interested, seriously interested in learning more and deeper into astrology, so don't miss out on this chat. More chance with this. Thank you so much, Vishti. Thank you so very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much.